Philip Rostelli, who once ran the Bonanno crime family, will pretty much be remembered for one thing, his wife Connie. Rostelli and Ralph Santora were accused of murdering an ex-convict, Michael Russo, in December 1954, after he backed out on a plan to hold up a bank. The Hood took Russo for a ride. He was shot four times, but lived. In 1949, Russo, a professional burglar, was released from a five-year prison sentence he was serving in Sing Sing Prison for a botched burglary. He partnered up with Rostelli and Santora in a series of stick-ups and burglaries. After the first shooting, Connie approached Russo after the first shooting and tried to bribe him out of testifying against her husband for attempting to murder him. She offered him $5,000 and a free home in Connecticut. She returned twice more and upped her offer only to have Russo turn her down. Finally, she threatened to kill him if he talked. The next day, Russo was dead. Rostelli and Santora picked him up a second time, took him for a ride, and this time successfully killed him and then dumped his body in Bath Beach. Connie was arrested for the threats and the attempted bribery, but Sohao managed to beat the rap. Connie's previous record included two arrests for performing illegal abortions. In 1956, Ralph Santora suffered a heart attack and died while at a public bath. It took the attendants 12 days to identify him. He was 39 years old. Seemingly no one in the underworld cared for Connie for very much. Even the press was rough on her, calling her a dumpy middle-aged woman and making sure that virtually every photo of her was a bad one. On December 18, 1961, Connie tracked her husband down to 221 South 4th Street in Brooklyn where he was living with his girlfriend. She was carrying a loaded pistol that Rostelli had hidden in her house. When Rostelli came out on the street, Connie shot him three times, wounding him, but not seriously. Connie was arrested and freed on bail on felonious assault charges. Rostelli told reporters at the time that the relationship was over after that, but actually it was over because Connie had threatened to talk to the district attorney about her husband's drug dealing. The Bonanno sent over a muscle man to talk to her about, but she threw him out of the house. Soon enough, it became clear that Connie was talking to the law after several Bonanno members were arrested. Then it looked like her husband was about to be indicted as well. That didn't happen because days before he was to be arrested, someone shot and killed Connie. On March 8, 1962, Connie was in her home at 77 North 7th Street in the Williamsburg section. She apparently had gone to the front door and let some in and then turned and walked back towards her kitchen when the visitor five times in the back of the head. Her son, from a previous marriage, found the body. Rostelli, a loan shark, extortionist, and drug trafficker, moved up inside the Bonanno crime family. In 1969, the National Crime Commission appointed a three-person panel to rule over the quickly fading Bonanno crime family. Rostelli would share the panel with Joseph D. Filippi and Natale Evola. Natale Evola died of cancer and the commission named Rostelli to the top spot. However, the real power in the family belonged to Carmine Galanti. On April 23, 1976, Rostelli was convicted of extortion and sentenced to 10 years in prison, served consecutively to a four-year state sentence for conspiracy, criminal contempt of court, and usury. Galanti seized control of the family and declared himself acting boss, which didn't sit right with anyone, especially the ruling commission who saw the move by Galanti for what it was, a grab at controlling the U.S. narcotics market. Genovese boss Frank Thierry organized the move to kill Galanti. Rostelli, from prison, was now recognized as the undisputed boss. Banano members Alphonse Sunny Red and Delicato, Dominic Big Trin Trinsera, and Philip Giacome quickly grew discouraged with taking orders from an absent boss and began a campaign to revolt and take over. At the same time, Joe Massino and Dominic Sunny Black Napolitano, although loyal to Rostelli, were making power grabs within the family as well. It boiled for a while, but Massino found out that Trinchera, and Delicato and Giacome were stocking up on automatic weapons and planned to murder the Rostelli loyalists within the Bananos. 
Messino moved first, and on May 5, 1981, the three Capos were murdered. The three were killed in the 2020 nightclub in Clinton Hill, Brooklyn. Messino had lulled them there under the guise of having peace talks. Messino's killers, wearing ski masks, hid in a storeroom closet and waited. Among them was Salvatore Vitali and Canadian Vito Rizzuto. Gelando Shasha and Frank Lino waited with Messino in the club's main room. When the Capos arrived, they were brought to the closet and Shasha brushed his hand through his hair, giving the prearranged signal. Vitali and the others rushed into the storeroom and Messino, an enormous man, punched Giacone to the floor and then grabbed in Delicato who was making a run for the door. The bodies were brought to the Lindenwood area of and buried in what was known as the Hole, a Gambino-run dumping ground. John Gotti, still a capo at that point, had given Messino permission to bury the bodies there. May 28, 1981, police found in Delicato's body. Thirteen years later, in October of 2004, neighborhood children reported finding a body in the Lindenwood lot. It turned out to be Trinchera and Giacone. Two years after the Capo's massacre, Rostelli was released from prison and on April 21, 1983, he ordered the murder of Bonanno soldier Cesare Bonventra. Salvatore Vitali, Luis Atanasio, and James Tartaglione were given the order from Messino, who was in hiding at the time. A year later, Rostelli was arrested on a parole violation and sent back to jail. A year after that, in 1985, Rostelli was indicted the New York Mob Leadership and Commission trial, although Rostelli was indicted on separate labor racketeering charges. Rostelli had been booted off of the commission because of the Donnie Brasco catastrophe. Regardless, he was sentenced to 12 years in federal prison. Rostelli died of liver cancer in 1991. He had been given a compassionate release from federal prison in Springfield, Missouri, where he was serving a 12-year sentence for labor racketeering.